All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to take a second and just allow participants to come into the webinar. We will get started in another minute or so. Thank you to everyone joining the session today. We know that if you are in Oakland, um, it is relatively early. So we appreciate everyone taking the time. All right, looks like our participant count is starting to slow down a little bit. So we, we can get started here. Um, Hi, everybody. My name is Jake Goldblum. My pronouns are he, him, his. I am um, I'm the Associate Director for Global Network Pathway Programs, uh, and I work specifically with the London programs, so Global Scholars um, in London and London Scholars. So I work closely with the London team um, to, to support the program, to make sure that the programs um, are, uh, are running smoothly, and the London team always does an amazing job um, supporting the on-ground operations. Um, I'm based in Boston, um, but again, I do work closely with the London team. I'll be out there um, in December and I'll be out there in January um, again. So um, so I will be out with the London team um, throughout the semester, but we do have a number of uh, London staff members with us today that will be assisting us with the session. Um, and so for the session, um, we have, um, this agenda here. So we have meet the NU London staff, uh, preparing for departures, departures and arrivals, living in London, learning in London, student life in London, and upcoming communications. So that will be most of the agenda for this session. Um, if you have a question, you can pop that into the Q&A throughout and we'll look to answer. Um, we do have some of the staff here um, on this slide, but um, they'll introduce themselves as they come up uh, for uh, present presenting their sections, um, because we do have a robust number of the staff with us today. Um, and we really appreciate that because we know that it is the end of their day over in London. So this is some of our team. Um, we do have more team members who can introduce themselves as they pop on. Um, but uh, one last piece about myself, um, I am essentially, um, you know, for parents, I'm the main contact for for the program. So if parents end up having questions, um, you know, they can reach out to me. Um, I work closely with the London team on um, on answering questions about different pieces of the program, residence life, student life, things like that. But these folks here on the on the slide are the ones who are doing um, a lot of the the day to day on ground work. So with that, um, I will turn it over to my colleague Catherine for preparing for departures. Hello everybody, my name is Catherine Baker and I am the Visa and Immigration Compliance Manager here in London. I'm going to talk to you um, about what you need to do to prepare for your departure, so what you need to know before you go. Can I have the next slide please? I'm going to chat a little bit about visas first. So all students who are coming to uh, study in London for the Global Scholars Program um, to require a visa, but some of the some of you will need to apply for one before you travel, and some of you will receive uh, a visa automatically at the border. So for the first group, you are called non-visa nationals, and this includes all USA citizens, and you don't need a visa. Um, to before you travel to the UK um, to study the Global Scholars Program. But there is some important information that you need to know about your entry into the UK. If you go through uh, a non-E-gate uh, border, so if you see a border officer, you must declare that study is your main purpose for being in the UK. You all have an SVV guide on your app status check portal, and it's really important that you look at that guide, especially for the list of documents that you should carry in your hand luggage. So that includes things like your passport, 
uh, your enrollment letters, your confirmation of participation letters. And again, those can all be found on your app status check portal and a few other documentation. Um, and just remember that that has to go in your hand luggage. So if you do need to see an immigration officer, you can supply them with um, documentation to prove that you're studying in the UK. If you are traveling independently, so not aboard any of the group flights, you should not travel via Ireland. Because there is a common travel area between the UK and the Republic of Ireland, you won't get the correct visa when you enter the UK. So please make sure that you're not traveling via any Irish uh, airport, and that includes um, Shannon, Dublin, um, and any of the other main airports in the Republic of Ireland. All independent travelers should complete, complete their flight booking Google form by the 15th of December. That Google form has already been sent to you via email and you should complete that as soon as possible so we know the details um, of your flight into London. If you can't access that Google form for whatever reason, please send an email to the visa team um, at the email that is shown on your screen now and they'll be able to assist you. Next slide, please. I know a few of uh, the students who are coming for the Global Scholars Programme in January do need to apply for a visit visa before they travel. All those students will have been contacted by the visa department already. You have two Google Forms that you need to complete before the 15th of December. So one is the flight booking form. If you're an independent traveler, that's the form I spoke about in the last slide. And you need to fill out the Global Scholars London Visa Google Form. And again, if you can't access those forms, please do contact the visa team via email. For all students that require a visa before traveling, you should not travel to the UK until you have received your visa. If you travel to the UK without the correct visa, you'll be denied entry at the border. So it's really important that you wait until you have your visa from the visa office before you travel. Again, when you see your border officer or your immigration officer when you arrive in London, you need to declare that study is your main purpose of your visit. You should also carry the exact same documents that are on the app status on sorry on the SVB guide which is on the app status portal as those who do not uh, require a visa before they travel and similarly you should not travel via the Republic of Ireland as you will not get the correct immigration stamp when entering the UK if you travel via any of uh, the Republic of Ireland airports if you do travel via Ireland, you will need to leave the UK to a, a different country, not the Republic of Ireland, uh, perhaps the European country, and then re-enter on the, on the correct uh, visa before you are able to enroll and, ten, and attend classes. So it's really important that you follow this instruction. Next slide, please. In the UK, we have a policy which is called the General Data Protection Regulation, and we shorten that to GDPR. And that means um, that is a policy which protects all of our individual information and personal data. What that means for you as a student is that we cannot discuss any personal information or academic information with your parents, guardians, or anybody else outside of the institution unless we have your specific written permission to do so. This is a law in the UK and we must follow this. Please make sure that your parents, guardians, understand this legal constraint. And if you do need your parents to be aware of something when you're in London, you'll need to provide written consent to the department in the university that you are dealing with. 
Next slide. Now I'm going to hand uh, I'm going to hand it over uh, to my colleague, my next colleague. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jess Coverdell, and I'm one of the residence life managers here at NU London. Um, and we're going to touch upon some important aspects to think about while you're living abroad. So first and foremost, we want to talk about your mobile phone or cell phone while abroad. It is a requirement that students have a working phone with the ability to text, call, and use data. This is so that you can get in contact with family, members of our team, members of the Northeastern team, when you are either in London or abroad traveling through other countries. We have a number of recommended mobile phone networks, as you can see here, GIFGAF, EE, Vodafone, and O2. Um, some students, prefer to use an international dining plan through their current provider in the States, um, and others will pay for a pay-as-you-go SIM when they land in the UK. If you ever have questions about a mobile phone network or acquiring a SIM card, it's certainly something that the ResLife team can assist with once you arrive in London. As you think about moving to London, it's really important to be staying in touch with home, right? Connect with your friends and family and create a schedule um, to make sure that you're staying in contact regularly. Um, technology these days is, is wonderful. So there's many ways that you can stay in contact with those um, several miles away. As you think about living um, for the six months in, in London, um, definitely consider banking and budgeting, right? Notifying any bank or credit card companies um, that you'll be traveling abroad. Uh, just so that any activity um, is not flagged as suspicious. And then being aware of the potential transaction fees and cost conversion that may take place if you're using a US card um, here in London. I will share that London is, is very much uh, a card city. We're moving away from using cash. It's very friendly with Google Pay, Apple Pay. Um, and I know myself and the students that are here use that quite frequently. In terms of medication and prescriptions, and that this is really important, is making sure if you are bringing them with you to the UK, that you are packing them in the original bottle um, and with the original prescription and carrying them in your, your carry-on. Um, for those who may be on long-term long medication, please make sure you're trying to bring a semester-long supply if possible. Um, and it's really important that we are not shipping medications. Um, and if you do need help acquiring medication while you're here in the UK, that is something our team can also assist with. Get the next slide, please. Thank you. Well, speaking about things to bring, right? Um, things to consider is remembering that whatever you pack, you will have to carry. Um, when we do ground transportation, which I know Maya will cover in a little bit, um, there is a little bit of a walk from where coaches drop you off um, to the residence halls or from the closest tube station to the residence halls. So making sure that you're packing light uh, and that you're able to manage your suitcases or your luggage on your own. Remembering that things can be bought here in London. Um, Amazon is very popular as well. So you don't need to bring everything with you as you can certainly acquire things when you're already here. Um, when asking students, we also they also recommend bringing raincoats and appropriate shoes. It does rain regularly in London. And certainly as we move into the winter months, we'll see a little bit more rain. Making sure that we're also bringing clothes that can be layered since the weather will vary greatly um, and air conditioning is not common in the UK. Um, there is no air conditioning within our residence halls um, or in tube stations and local stores. Uh, as you think about using all your tech, tech devices, mobile phones, making sure that you're bringing an adapter um, that will allow any US or um, international plugs to be used in, in London. Um, and most importantly as well, the, the voltage converters as the electric electricity supply in England um, is different to that in the US. Um, I always recommend that students carry one or two adapters um, with them. 
so that they can charge uh, phones and things like that as soon as they arrive and notify family that they've arrived safely in London. But certainly if you need more, uh, they can be acquired at a later date. As we talk about what to bring, it's really important to highlight things that you should not be bringing with you um, and things that should be staying at home. And this includes anything considered to be a weapon or a knife. Um, firearms and ammunition are strictly prohibited uh, in the UK. And most importantly as well, um, things like pepper spray, mace, or any derivatives um, of that are considered offensive weapons in the UK and possession of them is illegal. Um, if you need further information about items that are prohibited in the UK, we recommend that you check out the US State Department website. And then finally, um, I want to touch upon storage options here in, in London. We know a lot of students are very eager to move into their residence halls early. And unfortunately, uh, we are not able to do that prior to January 8th. Um, however, if you have, happen to be transiting through London as you travel before joining us, um, there is storage options both for belongings, right? There's multiple locations across London that's ideal if you're storing valuables or any boxes for at least a week. Um, and then if you also just want to store things such as luggage for short term stay, there's plenty of options uh, around London that you know our team is, is willing to share. Uh, a really great resource that students have used in the past um, as we think about arrivals is My Baggage, which includes door-to-door -door shipping from the US to the UK. And essentially you, you can pack things up in a suitcase or in a box and they will pick it up from your door in the US and they will deliver it to your door in the UK. What is really important is that if you're using things like My Baggage, we are not able to accept it prior to January 8th, as you need to check in and become a residence of the residence hall before you're registered on the mail system. So I would recommend using My Baggage if you are leaving larger items at home and have your parents send them once you've already arrived in London. And then I think I will pass on to Maya for arrivals information. Thank you, Jess. Um, hello, everyone. I am Maya. Um, I use she, her pronouns. And I am one of the student life managers at NU London. Um, we are, of course, very much looking forward to welcoming you all on Monday, the 8th of January. Um, for your arrivals, um, we will be in Heathrow Airport in Terminal 2, 3 and 5. Um, so coaches will leave from Terminal 2 and 5. Uh, so if you arrive in Terminal 3, please, we ask that you please make your way to Terminal 2. There is a pathway um, that goes uh, between Terminal 2 and Terminal 3, uh, which is very easy to find. But we do also have a staff member based in Terminal 3 that will help you help direct you uh, should that be needed. If you're coming into Terminal 2 or 5, we will be based uh, by the Travel Service Information Desk in Terminal 2 and will be based by the Costa Cafe, as you can see in these pictures, um, in Terminal 5. For your travel from Heathrow to the accommodation, we do provide on-ground transportation. Um, we will have staff on this transportation that will be escorting you to the coaches, on the coaches, and then from the coaches to your accommodation buildings. These coaches are planned so that they are departing around one and a half hour uh, after each of the group flights land. Um, if you're not on a group, group flight, but you have completed the independent travel form, we will coordinate with those students who have filled this out um, so that you can uh, join this on ground transportation as well. If you have not filled out the independent travel form, um, please do connect with us if you are still interested in um, joining on ground uh, transportation, and we will try our best to see if we can accommodate that. Um, in terms of baggage, as Jess uh, mentioned, the space is limited on coaches and you will have to walk and carry your own baggage from the coaches to your accommodation. Um, so we do ask that you limit it to a maximum of two large suitcases. Um, your check-in at the accommodation is from 8 a.m. Um, so if you are already in London, um, you can, of course, also just go straight to the accommodation on that date, on that time, um, or throughout that day and check in at your accommodation. 
In terms of independent travel, so if you're not joining um, the on-ground transportation, um, there is also a very easy way to get into central London with the new Elizabeth Line, uh, which is a tube service that goes straight from Heathrow Airport and to Liverpool Street Station and Whitechapel Station, which are stations that are very close, uh, in close proximity to all of the accommodations. It's very easy to either walk or take a short bus um from those stations um it's about an hour travel um from heathrow with the elizabeth line to these two stations in terms of traveling with the tube um it is uh, very easy and the transportation system is very um reliable in um in london there's also the heathrow express which is a good option from heathrow airport that takes you to paddington station in about 15 minutes and then you'll have to connect to tubes um, from there. Then we of course also have Ubers and taxis available um, in London and at the he uh, Heathrow Airport, um, which approximately would take uh, one and a half hour to drive um, into central London. Other than that, in terms of London travel, we do provide you with uh, something called an Oyster card, which is the travel card uh, that we use in London for all London transportation. This Oyster card will give you free travel in zone one and two. It's very unique and um, and it's a great um, addition uh, to the program that you get this travel card. So please do take care of it. Um, it is difficult to uh, to get in. So there might be some waiting time if you do lose it. Um, so we ask that you uh, really take care of this card uh, when it's given to you um, during your welcome week. In terms of uh, Ubers and black cabs, these are not included in your Oyster card. Um, Uber tends to be cheaper than taxis. Um, and I will we will say that these are the safer choice during the night. So a black cab is definitely the safer choice um, if you're out during the night. Um, another thing that's really good to mention is the app called City Mapper which uh, will show you, I would recommend everyone to download that before you arrive in London. It uh, is a very good provider at telling you which transportation is the easiest and the quickest, um, and it gives you loads of different options and choices. Um, I will now pass back to Residence Life. Hi there, yeah, so hi, my name is Patrick Tatarian and I use he, him pronouns. I am one of the Residence Life supervisors based here in London uh, and I am part of the Residence Life team that's here to support you during your time living in London. So could we get the next slide, please? Thank you. So you'll be living with members of your own cohort in one of four residence halls located across East London. Our residence, sorry, our residence hall partners include Chapter Orgate, IQ Orgate, Chapter Spitalfields, and Chapter Old Street. All buildings will have the following amenities, which includes a 24-7 reception team, a night security team so that you're kept safe in the evenings, mailboxes, study spaces, movie rooms, and communal spaces. These are all pretty consistent across all of the halls, so you'll find that all of these amenities are there and ready to be used by yourselves. Uh, can I get the next slide, please? Yes. So with your room uh, included in, in it will be a compact double bed. That's a twin bed, including a study area with a desk and a chair, closets, as well as a double duvet, pillows, and a linen packet. Um, each room will have a kitchen package, which includes your standard utensils, you know, forks, knives, and spoons, a set of plates, bowls, as well as cooking utensils for you to do some cooking. Uh, all the rooms also include a stovetop and a microwave. Um, in addition, you have plenty of storage space within your room as well. There you can put things as well, so on and so forth. Um, importantly, what's not included in the rooms are towels and bath mats. So we highly recommend that you bring at least one set of towels and a bath mat just for your first few nights. And if you want more, you're welcome to purchase them separately. Also not included include things like small appliances, so things like kettles, toasters and the like. If any anyone wishes to make use of those, these would also need to be purchased separately. And cleaning supplies as well. So that includes cleaning like 
cleaning liquids, mops, vacuum cleaners. Um, these also need to be acquired separately. Uh, some of the halls do offer like a vacuum cleaner that you can borrow, um, but we do recommend that you sort of take the time to sort of get your own sort of cleaning materials to be able to make sure you keep your room clean as you want to. Uh, can I get the next slide, please? So we have two options of rooms. We have studio rooms and shared rooms. So the first set are studio rooms. All of these halls here you see have studio rooms available. Um, a studio room is effectively one self-contained unit. You have your own room, your own kitchenette, and your own bedroom, uh, so your own bathroom. Uh, these are completely private, uh, and all of them basically feature the same amenities. Uh, this is fairly consistent across the board. They may obviously look a little bit different depending on the building you're in, but they are generally all of the same size. They have all of the same amenities, and they have all the same facilities as well. So your experience will be very consistent no matter what hall you stay in. So if you're someone who prefers sort of private, having your own space, then these are the places you'll be sort of assigned in a studio room. So can I get the next slide, please? Thank you very much. Uh, at Chapter Spitalfields, however, there are some exceptions. There are also shared accommodations, and these can include two bed apartments and four bed apartments. So these are if you prefer living with a roommate, and you want to sort of, you know, have that sort of social time with them. So you have the two bed apartments, which you will have a private bedroom, but the bathroom is shared, the kitchen is shared, and you have a little breakfast bar as well. Um, a kitchen pack is provided, but there are two kitchen packs, so one for each person, one occupying the room. So these are duplicated for each occupant that's living in a two bed apartment. For a four bed apartment, again, your bedroom will remain private. So you have either a shared bathroom or en-suites. So in an en-suite apartment, you'll have a private bathroom that's unique to each room. Uh, with a four-bed quad, you'll have a shared bathroom facilities, but these are shared two per, per sorry, two persons per one bathroom. Uh, and again, it's a shared kitchen and living space. So there is like a living area with sofas and so on. Again, kitchen packs are provided um, so that, again, for each occupant of the room. So each occupant will have their own kitchen pack. Um, then I'm next going to pass back over to Jess for the next slide to talk more about residence life. So, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Pat. Oh, thank you, Patrick. Um, so we briefly wanted to cover what is residence life, and recognizing most of you have already lived on campus uh, in Oakland and may be familiar with what residence life does. Um, but residence life here in London is um main goal is to create inclusive and supportive communities, um, not only in your residence hall, but among all students on our campus. Um, we are here to help you settle into London and recommend new and exciting things to do um, in this city, um, as well as to develop an appreciation for the local communities uh, around you. Of course, um, and importantly, right, our team is here to um, connect you with any support you may need. Um, whenever you may need it um, throughout the semester. Our team um, is built up of um, residence life managers like myself, our residence life supervisors like Patrick, um, and importantly, the residence life coordinators. Now, these are the staff members that live in the residence halls with yourselves, um, and they um, are there to provide mentorship and guidance um, within your group. You'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations um, known here as Husky Chats with with your RLC on a on a monthly basis, um, just to connect and see how you're doing. And uh, if you need support resources, they can get you connected to those. If you're having struggles with your classes, they can help you figure things out. Um, if you're just looking for recommendations for, you know, European trips or where to go for dinner, um, the RLCs are able to, to assist you with that. They do live in the, the residence halls with you and we have an on-call rotation with an emergency phone that is staffed 24 seven, 365. So should you find yourself in a situation where you need help from a member of our team, we are able to assist you with that. Um, excitingly, uh, webinars with RLCs will take place in early January. So you'll be able to meet the team that works in um, the residence hall that you will be living in, you'll be able to meet your specific RLC um, and perhaps start to, to build community, not only with your RLC, but other members um, in your student group. 
we also throw residence life events within the residence halls. So these are for, for smaller groups um, and even building wide events. So you can get to know smaller groups of people. You can get to know your RLC, um, but also mingle with uh, students who live in your building on different floors that perhaps you may not have met otherwise. And we've had some great ones so far. We had a lot of Halloween um, themed events. We have a lot of our welcome mixes that we'll be having in uh, January to sort of really welcome you uh, to the community and, and to so you can get to know your fellow students. Um, we have recently created our ResLife uh, Instagram page and there's a QR code on the screen now, um, but the handle is also at ResLife underscore NU London. And our team is planning on filming some tours of the residence halls and sort of the getting to know use for the RLC. So you can really start to get a feel for, for who is there to support you within the residence hall um, before you even land here in London. And then I will be passing on to, I believe, Alyssa, um, for information around safety. Hey everyone, my name is Alyssa Burke. I'm from the Global Safety Office here at Northeastern. I use she, her pronouns. I am Boston based, but we support all of our global programs here at Northeastern. So we work very closely with our London office um, to help support you during your time while you're there. I'm going to talk today a little bit about um, some general safety guidance and information. And um, as you arrive in London, you'll receive more information from Jess and her team about living in London and staying safe. But today I wanted to give you some general guidance some resources and advice to help prepare you for your time in London. Um, so firstly, I'd like to request that everyone read the U.S. State Department um, country information, travel advisory, and the country security report for the United Kingdom prior to departure. Um, I have the specific links here listed out so you can take a picture of it. But really, if you search for U.S. State Department, United Kingdom country information, you'll get taken to that travel country information page, which is the first link. And from there, the travel advisory is linked on that page. And then the country security report is linked within the travel advisory. The country security report is produced by the regional security officer at the U.S. Embassy in the United Kingdom on an annual basis. And it really gets into the nuts and bolts of safety in the United Kingdom and specifically mentions London throughout. So I definitely recommend that you read and review all of these documents prior to departure so that you're aware of the information and guidance that they produce. Additionally, um, on the next slide or one of the following slides, I have a QR code for this additional document here, the UK Customs Guidance for Traveling to the UK. So this is what the UK Customs and Border Force wants you to know about arriving into the UK. So things you can bring, things you shouldn't bring, um, and arrival procedures. So um, another important document, which you should review prior to your departure. Um, and London is a great cosmopolitan, very diverse, and very welcoming city. However, it is a large city, just like any of the other cities that we operate in, Boston, Oakland, et cetera. So I've shared some general safety advice and guidance here with you. And again, when you arrive in London, your staff will be there to support you and to provide some additional guidance if you have any questions. But essentially, it's really important as you navigate a new city, a new environment, that you're paying attention to your surroundings as well as your belongings at all times. When you're on the train, you're aware of where your belongings are. If you're walking down the street, you don't have your earbuds in, not paying attention with your phone, um, just hanging out of your pocket. Just general awareness um, to help keep you safe. Uh, walk or travel with a large group when you're out, especially if you're out at night. Um, and as Maya mentioned, consider taking a taxi or an Uber. Um, taxi standards are very high in London. So if you do um, experience any issues with them, those are taken very seriously. Um, so they are a great option for you um, if you are out late at night and would like a safer ride home. Um, don't engage with strangers on the street. Um, and if you do feel unsafe for any reason, please leave the area um, and report it to your RLC staff um, or to authorities if you feel you need emergency assistance. Again, this is similar to any real city environment. Um, there are people that may be loitering or homeless populations. Um, and so just making sure you're looking out for your safety is important. Um, have emergency numbers programmed in your phone, um, 999 or 1112. 
um, in the UK will work. Those are the equivalents of 911. Um, GSSN, which I'll mention in a minute, as well as your RLC on call numbers, which you will receive on arrival in London. So that will help connect you with a member of Jess and Peter, or Patrick's team, 24-7 um, if you need support. Um, you are will now be traveling to a location where most or all of you will be of legal age to consume alcohol. And while we do certainly do not encourage um, alcohol consumption, if you choose to do so, we please request that you do so in moderation, that you look out for one another and do not leave your drinks unattended. Um, our Office of Prevention and Education, OPEN, has some great resources. Um, on their website and some learning modules. So if you would like some additional information about alcohol, about bystander intervention, and any other um, guidance and techniques to help you in this new environment, um, their website is a great option. Open.northeastern.edu, I believe is the link. And then finally, we ask that you avoid protests and demonstrations. Um, protests typically in London are remain peaceful, but there is always the potential at any protest or demonstration that violence could occur. Um, some demonstrations, particularly in London, can become very large in the tens of thousands of populations. So just be mindful when they are occurring and where they are occurring so that you can plan your day accordingly. A lot of um, potential locations are usually around government buildings or in Trafalgar Square or other locations like that. So just being mindful of when they are occurring and where and there is important. Um, we will be sending guidance uh, through our travel registry um, that is produced by security analysts. So if they're made aware of a large scale demonstration um, or another security event that you should be aware of, you'll get an automatic email alert. Um, additionally, we recommend that you register with the State Department STEP program, step.state.gov, where they also um, send out email notifications of uh, demonstrations or other uh, noteworthy events. Next slide. Um, so this is the QR code to the UK Border and Customs Information page. So you can scan that code if you want, or the link is on there as well to the PDF. So just as Jess mentioned earlier, um, the UK has very strict weapons laws. So even um, devices or um, weapons that are solely being carried to use for self-defense are considered prohibited, and that's not a defense to local authorities. Um, so please be mindful of what you are bringing with you, as well as typically the airlines will have prohibitions on what you should have in your baggage. So please pay close attention to those items. So that's knives, pepper spray, et cetera, and illegal drugs. Um, marijuana is not illegal. I mean, it's not legal in the United Kingdom for recreational use. So please be aware of that. Um, just one more um, note from me about um, accessing healthcare um, while you are in London. Um, if you are taking medications to London, we have a QR code um, and a link here to the UK government's information page on taking medication into the United Kingdom. So certainly if you are someone that that applies to, we recommend checking out that resource prior to travel as well. Um, for your awareness, for local emergencies, 999 or 112 is the equivalent of 911. Um, if you want to speak to an NHS nurse, the nurse's line is 111. They can help triage your situation and let you know if they feel you need to go to an A&E, urgent care, or if it's something that may be more minor, could be treated at a pharmacy. Um, there is an, a link here for A&E, so emergency rooms. So you can look up the location of emergency rooms in relation to where you are if you feel like you need it. Um, and then if you need mental health resources, the student support and development team at the London campus can help connect you to resources. But we also have our Northeastern Global Safety Support Network. So this is our 24 seven hotline, which helps connect students in London um, to medical care as needed. So there is no on-campus health center at the London campus. So you would be using resources within the community. Um, and so our Northeastern Global Safety Support Network, um, it's a hotline that's staffed by a company called Crisis 24, and they have a medical assistance team 
um, who answers and triages the calls. They have a nurse staff on call at all times. So if you call in and have symptoms and want to talk to a nurse, a medical team, um, they are available to talk to you or they can call you right back to um, talk about your symptoms. And then if they um, if you need an appointment or a referral, um, they can help set you up with an appointment at a local facility um, within London. Some of our providers we use on a daily basis, um, so they are aware of the Northeastern community and needs. I have um, mentioned here on the third from the bottom bullet, um, some of the providers include my private chemist and the HCA network, which is a private healthcare network within London. Um, so depending on the type of need, um, if it's just a cold flu symptoms, it usually gets pathway through my private chemist, or if it's a more, um, if there's a potentially a specialist need or anything like that, the HCA network um, has all varieties of specialist care that's available. Um, so it's important to know that students are required to maintain personal primary medical insurance throughout the program. Um, while Northeastern provides coverage for urgent and emergency situations, there are a number of exclusions, including um, ongoing care for chronic conditions, um, elective care, um, glasses, contacts, replacement, or dental care. So you want to make sure that you um, maintain coverage for those type of items um, while you're abroad. And then it's just important to note that while you are um, in London, you are not eligible for NHS coverage because of your the short-term nature of your program, but you can still utilize A&Es or urgent cares in the event of an emergency. Um, there is the potential that they could potentially charge you for the services, although I, I very rarely see that occur. Um, just be mindful that if you do utilize an A&E, um, that there may be a wait time and you are triaged accordingly to the level of urgency. Um, and that may be a little bit of a different expectation than you have here in the States or from your home that you don't necessarily get a place in line if something more urgent comes in, then you may have to wait longer. Um, so if you are going to see something that's a little bit less urgent, um, calling the hotline and scheduling appointment might be a better option for you. Um, they can usually get appointments for same day or next day, um, depending on the time of the call. Um, so there are resources available. I think lastly, if you have any questions, um, my travel plans at northeastern.edu is my office's group inbox, and that would be the best place to, to um, start the conversation. Uh, next slide. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'll um, continue with learning in London and telling you a little bit what it is like studying in London. I am Dr. Nina Rowland. I'm the Associate Director for our mobility programs in London. So I oversee the uh, student academic experience of our global scholars and London scholars, and I use she, her pronouns. Can I have the next slide, please? So I want to tell you first about the program structure and our academic calendar. And I have seen already some questions in the Q&A box about that. So you will have 11 teaching weeks plus one midterm exam week. Some of your courses will have uh, midterm exams. Some of your courses won't have midterm exams. But in any case, this is a week that counts as a teaching week. Office hours will also take place during that week. You will then get two weeks for uh, Easter break or spring break. And then when you come back from spring break, you have a few weeks and then at the end you have your final exam week. So if you want to make a note of the dates, you can do so here. You will see that classes begin on the 15th of January um, and they end on the 26th of April. And the two week break for spring break is uh, end of March until 5th of April. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. So I want to tell you a little bit about some key differences that we have in the UK with the US higher education system. So the uh, academic program uh, is completely integrated within the Northeastern Boston curriculum. Uh, so you have equivalent courses, for example. However, because our courses are also accredited in the UK, it means that we have some differences in our systems. For example, around the grading system. In the UK, you will receive a numerical grade that will then be translated into a letter grade and it will count towards your GPA. I'll show you in a minute a conversion chart that you will be able to use to translate our numerical system into letter grades and GPA points. 
In the UK, we have what we call a moderation process for the grading system, which means that we have several layers of scrutiny when an assignment is graded. And this is to ensure that the grading is fair, reliable uh, and equal among all students. But that also means that the turnaround time to get your grades and get your feedback is a little bit longer than what you are used to. So it might take up to 28 calendar days to get your grades back. But once you have them back, you can be assured that it has been graded in a fair uh, and unbiased way. Here in at Northeastern University London, uh, as part of our regulations, you also need to attend all your assignments in order to pass a class. And if for some reason you have missed an assignment, you will have an opportunity to receive this assignment during what we call the second sitting period. However, uh, the assignment, the grade for this assignment will be capped during the second sitting period. So it's important that you send all your assignments and that you attend all the uh, assessments that you have. And another difference that I want to mention here is that a lot of our processes are centralized in the UK. So you wouldn't approach directly your professor, for example, to ask for an extension on an assignment. Instead, you would have to fill out a form. It will be processed by our registry office, and then they might grant you an extension. And it's the same for absences. Uh, it's good practice to let your professors know that you will be absent, but you also have to fill out forms to let our services know that you will be absent. So we have a few differences in our policies and regulations that we will keep reminding you of. And when you're here at the beginning of January, I will do a full presentation on all our regulations and policies. Can I have the next slide, please? So this is our conversion chart, uh, and you can see some differences. So you will receive a numerical grade, but you can see that uh, a pass here is a 40. So a 40 is a D minus, anything under that is a fail, and an A is a 70 or above. So this is something that you might need a bit of time to adjust to once you're here, but don't worry, the conversion chart is available everywhere. So uh, you can already make a note of it if you want now, but you will get it once you are here. It will be on different Canvas pages when you are here as well. It's on our website as well. So you will find it in different places, but this is just to prepare you that you might need to do a little bit of a, a gymnastic to translate some of your grades. And remember that your grades will count into your overall GPA. Can I have the next slide? Um, so what it is like to study in London, London is a great city to study. There are so many resources here. The campus is also really nice. So we have this main building at Devon House. Everything is in that building. So it's very easy to access and to move between classes. You have relatively small classes, usually between 20 and 30 students per class, unless it's a lecture. But even lectures, they won't be super big. They would be up to 80 students, for example. You will have a lot of experiential learning as part of your classes, particularly through co-curriculars. So these are, for example, uh, theater trips, museum trips that you will do as part of um, your classes. So you will see that London is very much used as a classroom as well. Um, in terms of textbooks or course materials, uh, everything will be um, on, on campus. Once you arrive here, we will inform you of anything that you need to purchase. It will be available on your Canvas course pages as well. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that right now. It's only once you are here that uh, your professors will inform you of that. We also have great library resources here. We do not have an on-campus library, but you have access to several big libraries in London. Uh, and finally, I just want to tell you about the workload here. So uh, you will typically have four courses per week, and these are usually three hours per course per week. Some of them might be a bit more, depending on if you have labs or not, for example. Um, you are also expected to work independently in addition to your contact time in classes. And um, you will see that you will also be in classes that are mixed with other students. So you will be mixed with London scholars, who are our students who are here for one year before they move on to the Boston campus. And you will also be uh, in some classes with our dual degree students. So these are students who are here with us for their whole degree for three years. So it will be nice to meet different students and especially the London scholars who would have been here already for one semester when you arrive in January. Can I have the next slide? And I'll pass it on now to academic support.
Oh uh, yeah, um, I'm Maya Leonard, and I have I use she her pronouns, and I am the lead academic advisor at Northeastern University London. Um, so to tell you a bit more about academic support, we provide academic support and advising. So our academic advisors um, services include giving guidance on time management organization, note-taking, and active listening, study tips, academic policies, such as extenuating circumstances, and much more. We also help students select classes and aid in your transition from London to Boston in the spring. Um, while you're in London, your assigned advisor here is your first point of contact for all things academic, so we ask that you um, reach out to one of us first um, instead of reaching out to a Boston advisor or even your Oakland advisor. So I think you guys are Oakland students. Um, academic advisors are assigned by college and that information will be given to you guys in London. Um, so the other part of our team is academic support, which includes specialized tutors. We have a learning differences advisor who specializes in supporting students who are neurodiverse or who have learning differences. Um, we actually have two of these tutors. And we also have an English and academic writing advisor. Uh, she provides support to students in developing their academic English skills. And I think she even hosts a variety of workshops um, that hone in on academic English skills. I know that this semester she actually has even started um, doing interview prep. So she helps with a lot of things. And we also have a maths tutor who will be able to provide one-on-one -on -one support and even in group settings. Um, to any students who are taking math courses, such as Mathematical Methods 1, uh, Calculus for Business, or Differential Equations. Next slide, please. Uh, so some reminders and FAQs that we wanted to share with you guys, starting with transfer credits. Um, in order to receive transfer credit from your AP, IB, dual enrollment, A-levels, and any other type of transfer credits that you did prior to becoming a Northeastern student will need to be reported to Northeastern's Boston team. Please keep in mind that you can only have up to 32 semester slash credit hours and transfer credits. Also, this credit will show on your official transcript um, as credit for the NU course equivalent, but without a grade. So essentially, those credits do not affect your GPA. For more information on how to report credits, you can actually just reach out to your academic advisor on your current campus. Um, and if you have already sent in course credits and you just wanna make sure that it has been received, you can also just email transfercredit at northeastern.edu directly. Um, as you guys all know, we have done our selections for spring courses already. Um, that deadline was on Halloween. Um, and so at this time, we cannot accept any requests for changes to your course registration. Uh, we will we will be unable to make any changes until the first day of classes, which is Monday, the 15th of January. Um, we will be giving you more information about AdDrop in the future, uh, but on this page, I do have a QR code that has more information on the AdDrop policy. I do highly recommend um, that you read through our AdDrop policy so that you can be aware of the acceptable reasons to request an AdDrop change. Uh, and also requesting a change during AdDrop does does not guarantee that your your request will be accepted. Um, so once again, please look through our ad drop policy. It's linked in the QR code and will be sent to you in future emails. Um, so you should also be receiving an email regarding online enrollment soon. I believe it's actually being sent to you at the end of this month or beginning of December. When you're completing your online enrollment, the courses that you were officially registered for will be listed on there. So we do not send any other type of confirmation of your official registered courses. So please make sure you take note of what courses you're registered for when you're completing your online enrollment. You won't receive your official schedule or timetable during orientation, or you will receive your official course schedule and timetable um, during orientation in London. We cannot provide it prior to your arrival. The timetable will show you when and where your lectures and or labs will take place. Also during welcome week, um, the advisors will be tabling. You can stop by and meet your academic advisor, more information to follow as well. And we can go on to the next slide with student support. 
Perfect. Hi everyone, I'm Jade. I'm a student support coordinator from the student support and development team. The student support team are available to sort, support you with a range of matters such as general support relating to your studies and personal circumstances, mental health advice, learning support plans, financial and budgeting advice and overall to help you navigate university life. We offer confidential advice, guidance and support on anything that is affecting your ability to study or affecting your mental health and well-being. The teams are able to make referrals into relevant specialist support, such as counselling. Just like you have find at Northeastern, we offer Spectrum Life. It's a 24-7 student support um, um, kind of like guidance. So Spectrum Life offers a confidential free phone line, an online chat function that students can use 365 days a year. Um, next slide, please. Okay, perfect. So for those students who have registered with the DRC or SASS, you won't need to submit any further documents unless your circumstances have changed. Um, the student wellbeing coordinators will review the documents and prepare, pre prepare a learning support plan for you for your time at NU London. Um, so after this, reasonable adjustments might differ between different sites, so between Oakland and here at London, um, depending on the national academic standards and regulations. So if you're not registered with the DRC or SAS and have a medical condition or disability, either mental or physical, or a specific learning differences that may impact your studies, housing or day-to-day -day life whilst in London, please contact the London Wellbeing Coordinators at studentsupport at nulondon.ac.uk. Um, and then the DRC webinar week will be commenced in the number, um, November 13th um, and more information will come out soon. Thank you. Hi again, everyone. Um... I'm back again, Maya, uh, just to talk about student life uh, whilst you're in London. As I mentioned, I am one of the student life managers. Um, and as student life, we're here to help promote student leadership and provide you that out of class experience and make sure that you have lots of different events going on and different uh, activities to do to form that community outside of the classroom with other students on different programs at NU London. Um, we work very closely with the Student Union and Student Voice um, and all of the students on campus uh, to both support kind of running clubs and societies. Um, and you can also have the chance of joining or setting up your own club or society. Um, in terms of our student union, we have NUSU London, uh, which is a student union uh, run by seven elected students from different degrees and different year groups. They, the student union is, is uh, equivalent to the student government in the US that you might know. Um, and they organize a lot of different events and initiatives and they run different clubs and societies. Um, and that can be sports clubs as well. So they have uh, football and uh, volleyball and all these different uh, sports clubs as well as societies that range from uh, Taylor Swift's uh, society um, to LGBTQ plus um, and they do a lot of different fundraising and volunteering as well so loads of different opportunities uh, with our student union uh, their Instagram's also down here at NUSU um, underscore London uh, where you can stay up to date on all the different events uh, that they run as well. They will also be running some events during our welcome week, uh, which Anna will talk about a little bit later. Um, and um, and yeah, uh, very great opportunities. And with that being said, I will turn over to Anna to talk about welcome week. Hello everyone, um, I'm Anna Perez, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a student life coordinator. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Welcome Week. Uh, Welcome Week will be your first week in London before the classes start, and it will be full with activities and events that Student Life um, has planned for you, and some of the student union events as well. 
Um, on Tuesday, 9th of January, you will be coming to the campus in Devon House to complete your mandatory registration. And on Wednesday, 10th of January, we'll be based at the IET building where we will have orientation and induction sessions where you will be able to meet the different teams that work at NU London. But as I said before, the week will be full with events and activities such as a welcome week, uh, welcome week mixer in Ulster Lanes, which is a retro bowling alley, theatre trips to see The Lion King and Wicked, ice skating and a visit to the London Dungeon. Then during the weekend, uh, you will have the opportunity to visit the London Eye and explore the Thames on a river cruise. Uh, for these events, you will have to sign up, but you will have plenty of time and communications on how to do the signups for the events. Um, can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> um, the previously mentioned events are not the only ones. Uh, during your time in London, you will have the opportunity to take part in extracurricular activities and excursions, like, for example, theatre trips to the Cirque du Soleil or Mamma Mia, day trips to Cambridge, Brighton and Oxford, um, a visit to the Harry Potter studios and a trip to the Big London Bake. During the term, you will also have the opportunity to spend a weekend in either Manchester or in Bath via Stonehenge. Uh, we have four different weekends for these you can choose from, and the signups will be released in December. Uh, this is all about Welcome Week and Student Life events for now. I uh, will keep you posted to, um, by email on when to sign up. And now I'll turn it over to Maggie, which is one of our students in NU London, and she will talk about their experience. Hi everyone, um, my name is Maggie and I'm currently a freshman in, in New London and my next semester will be in Auckland and I'll basically talk about my experience so far in London. So first, how was my transition to London? It was really smooth because the university arranges tour from our accommodation site to the university where we are we were able to get to know like how can we reach university through different methods and also we have our residential life coordinates that help us tackle all of our questions and concerns in regarding to our life in uh, camp on campus or outside of campus and also the food here is really good where you can always find cuisines and like your hometown flavors here anywhere and you can also get deliveries from the Rue. and when you're extremely exhausted because of your schoolwork or because you're just settling down so it was really smooth for me and what are some currently like I got involved in my campus is there are a lot of fun clubs and sports available for example like tennis basketball like mentioned before and if you're like a like a business students like me, then there are entrepreneur clubs and business challenge competition that will make your life on campus very fun. And there will also be on campus activities and celebrations for different holidays. We had chocolate fountain and marshmallow fruits for one of our annual celebrations. And also we have sometimes provide snacks and lunch during um, noon and that we can for match a specific theme or a celebration. And something really important to keep in mind is that you really need to follow the NU Linda Instagram because all of the new activities will be posted on there. There will be free tickets for all kinds of musicals, um, skatings, and make sure the tickets is limited. So make sure you fo follow them and check the update and let that help you to make your Linda experience better. And also in our campus, we also have pool and ping pong table where you can have fun after class. And in my perspective, in New London, it's kind of like a community where it's kind of like high school where you know everybody and all the professors know you and you will have very close relationship with your professors because every class we have around, for my class, I have around 20 students and we have we can book office hour very conveniently. So basically we can like tackle all of our academic concerns and we can always reach out very easily. And last, how is living and commuting in London for me? To me, it's very convenient because I live in Chapter Spitalfields and we're it's right next to a huge station called Liverpool Station where you can easily travel to and direct it to everywhere in London. And I believe all the accommodation sites have that for all for Chapter um, Auge or like uh, IQ Auge, they, uh, they all have like uh, Auge Station, Auge East. And so, and I never remember one occasion that I need to find another station that's really far from the one um, that's close to me. So in, in order to get to the place I wanna go. And going to school is very convenient because 
it's a 20 minutes walk for my accommodation site and for um IQ and uh, chapter okay basically um because the bus sometimes won't arrive on time so I really recommend if you live in these two three accommodation sites just walk and it is really um, just very convenient and so far my life in London is spectacular it's like so fun such a wonderful experience so I can't wait for you guys to come here and enjoy what I'm having right now in my life and thank you All right. Thank you so much, Maggie, and to everyone. So I know that we are slightly over time, but we did want to make sure that we got through all of our slides for today. Um, so uh, we are wrapping up. And um, so there will be some upcoming communication, just an FYI that this session um, is being recorded and will be sent out along with some additional information in the next couple of weeks. So please um, be on the lookout for the recording as well as some additional key information that we're going to just be passing along um, in mid-November. Um, so again, we have the DRC webinars that are coming up. Um, so you'll, students should be receiving some uh, additional information about that. Um, <clears throat> we'll be following up, like I said, with this transition webinar uh, recording along with some information. Early December, um, you'll, students will be receiving the No Before You Go email. Um, and then there's a bunch of different information from uh, the London team that will be coming out in December. So please be on the lookout for all of that. Um, welcome week schedule, um, flight booking information, um, the visa Google forms, um, the not long to go email. And then in January, the first mobility newsletter will go out. And then the first week of January as well, the residence hall webinars. So um, you don't have to memorize all this. You'll have this available uh, in the recording. Don't worry. Um, but we do want to make sure that you know we'll be communicating with everyone. Um, so yeah, so we can go to the next slide. Um, and I think we answered most of our questions, um, which is great. If you have additional questions, I think we can go to the last slide um, <clears throat> for this. Um, if you have additional questions, um, you can reach out to the Global Scholars email. And then we can um, we can always um, connect you to the to the correct person depending on what what the what your question is. Um, and Maya, can we just go to the last slide here? Awesome, yeah. Um, so you, you can always uh, keep keep in touch through our social media channels. Um, you can email globalscholars at northeastern.edu, um, and someone will uh, be in touch with assistance. Um, my email is here. Um, and uh, again, um, based on the GDPR piece, um, I'm generally the, the primary point of contact for um, parents. And then I work closely with um, the London team to get any answers for you know how things are going. Um, and yeah, so we're so excited to have everybody join us. Um, we know that you all are wrapping up this semester, so good luck. Um, if you have any questions um, after this, please let us know. But again, we'll be in touch pretty regularly. Um, so that's all we have for today. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll stay on for a couple more seconds here. But otherwise, have a great rest of your semester. And we'll see you soon.